15 million years ago, the wetlands of ancient Eurasia echoed with the slow, steady steps of a creature both majestic and bizarre. It looked almost like an elephant, but with a mouth like no animal alive today. This was Platybelodon, the shovel-tusked elephant, a Miocene mystery that defied expectations. With a body built for bulk and a jaw designed like a spade, it was one of evolution's most imaginative experiments, a giant herbivore shaped not only by its environment but by the changing climate of a world in transition. As dawn broke over the marshes, a herd of platybelodons waded into the shallows, their wide lower jaws slicing through reeds, young ones stayed close to their mothers, while older bulls used their tusks to peel bark from trees. They were not predators, yet their presence commanded respect. In this long-lost scene of prehistoric life, Platybelodon was both architect and consumer of its world, forever shaping the landscape around it, an unusual branch of elephant evolution. To understand Platybelodon, we must travel back to the Miocene epoch, 23 to 5 million years ago, a time when elephants were still experimenting with form. Proboscideans, the order to which elephants belong, were once far more diverse than they are today. There were tusked titans with straight jaws, elephantine creatures with downward curved teeth, and then there were the shovel tuskers, like Platybelodon, which had lower tusks so flattened and wide, they resembled scoops. Evolving around 15 million years ago, Platybelodon belonged to the Amoebelodontidae, a group known for their strange jaw adaptations. Their lineage likely stemmed from Africa but quickly spread into Eurasia, where environmental changes demanded new strategies for survival. Platybelodon was one such strategy, a creature with a built-in tool. Honed over generations, perfectly shaped for a very specific kind of feeding. Unlike today's elephants, which rely heavily on their trunks, Platybelodon developed its own unique method of harvesting food, by using its jaw like a blade. Working in tandem with a trunk that likely lacked the same finesse as modern elephants but compensated with brute force. Anatomy. The shovel mouth, explained. While similar in size to modern Asian elephants, Platybelodon was set apart by its skull. Most notably, its lower tusks had fused into a broad, flat scoop, a shovel of bone and ivory, capable of scraping, chopping, and slicing. These lower tusks were paired with thinner, upward-curving upper tusks, and a long, strong trunk that was likely used to manipulate branches and grasses. Scientists initially debated whether Platybelodon even had a trunk, but wear patterns, muscle attachment sites, and nasal openings all point toward a trunk-bearing creature albeit one adapted to support the powerful cutting action of its lower jaw. The rest of the body was elephant-like, with columnar legs and massive feet, though slightly more agile and possibly better adapted to soft, muddy terrain, not a swamp grazer after all. For decades, paleontologists believed Platybelodon used its shovel tusks to scoop aquatic plants from swamps. This idea, proposed in the 1930s, painted a picture of a gentle, hippo-like grazer living in still waters. It made sense, at the time, but later research began to question this narrative. In the 1990s, new microware analysis, the study of tiny scratches and pits on fossilized teeth, revealed a different story. The wear patterns on Platybelodon's tusks didn't align with soft aquatic plants. Instead, they suggested harder, woodier material, like bark and twigs. The tusks were beveled, sharp, and worn in a way consistent with cutting and stripping. This wasn't a scooper, it was a slicer. Paleontologists now believe Platybelodon used its trunk to grab branches, pulling them down across the sharp edge of its shovel jaw to saw through vegetation. Some researchers even compare it to a prehistoric scythe, its tusks acting like blades to slice through tough plant fibers. Flexible diet, flexible habitat, while Platybelodon's shovel may have started as a swamp tool, it evolved into a multi-purpose adaptation. It could strip bark, chop reeds, and maybe even dig up roots. This feeding flexibility allowed it to survive in a range of habitats, from wetlands and riversides to seasonal grasslands. Fossil finds in China, Mongolia, and Kenya reveal that Platybelodon had a vast range. In particular, the fossil-rich Tungur formation in Inner Mongolia has provided a treasure trove of skeletons including individuals of all ages, from tiny calves to massive bulls. Paleoenvironments in these regions suggest that Platybelodon preferred mixed landscapes, places where it could find both water and woody plants. Its wide feet and relatively lighter build helped it navigate soft, marshy ground, and its adaptable jaw allowed it to make the most of whatever vegetation was available. 
the discovery that shaped our understanding. The bones of Platybelodon first emerged from the earth in southern Russia in the 1920s. Paleontologist Alexei Borisiak described the species Platybelodon danavi from fossils found in the Kuban region. Noting the jaw's unusually wide, flat shape, it was a puzzle piece from a creature no one had seen before. But the real turning point came in 1928, when American explorer Roy Chapman Andrews and paleontologist Walter Granger discovered a treasure trove of Platybelodon fossils in the Tungur Formation of Inner Mongolia. They unearthed over two dozen individuals, from juveniles to adults, even what appeared to be a fossilized fetus. These finds offered a rare window into the life cycle of a Miocene giant. The new species, Platybelodon grangeri, was named in Granger's honor. For the first time, scientists had the ability to study how the strange jaw developed as the animal aged, from a narrow scoop in juveniles to the massive, flaring shovel seen in adults. These fossils inspired decades of research, debate, and reinterpretation transforming our understanding of not only Platybelodon, but the incredible diversity of prehistoric elephants, a family of giants, relatives and rivals. Platybelodon belonged to a much larger family tree. It was part of the Amoebelodontidae, a group of shovel-tusked proboscideans that includes cousins like Amoebelodon and Torinobelodon. Amoebelodon, found in North America, had longer, narrower shovel tusks, more like scoops, while Platybelodons were shorter and broader functioning more like slicing tools. All these animals descended from a common ancestor that pioneered the shovel-tusk strategy. But each lineage adapted differently depending on local conditions, like regional chefs perfecting their own knife techniques. Unlike Platybelodon, modern elephants have no lower tusks. Instead, they rely on long upper tusks and incredibly dexterous trunks, capable of picking up a single peanut or ripping a branch from a tree. Modern elephants are generalists, able to graze, browse, and adapt to diverse environments. By contrast, Platybelodon was more specialized, its bunodont molars were perfect for crushing bark and soft stems but less suited for abrasive grasses. Its entire body was shaped around its feeding tool, the shovel jaw. Yet there were similarities too. The large tusks, evidence of sexual dimorphism, and potential herd behavior all suggest that Platybelodon shared social traits with today's elephants. It's easy to imagine a mother teaching her calf how to position a branch on its tusks. Just as elephants today pass down knowledge through generations, the fall of the shoveled tusked titan. No creature lasts forever, not even one as brilliantly adapted as Platybelodon. Around 10 million years ago, it vanished from the fossil record. Why? The culprit was likely a changing climate. As the Miocene progressed, earth grew cooler and drier. Forests retreated, wetlands dried up. Grasslands expanded, the habitats Platybelodon had mastered began to shrink. While some paleontologists once believed Platybelodon could handle open environments, recent research suggests it was still primarily a wetland browser. When the marshes and forests disappeared, so did its niche. At the same time, newer, more versatile elephants, early members of the Elephantidae, began to rise. These ancestors of modern elephants had better molars for grinding grass stronger limbs for long-distance travel, and more efficient trunks. As grasslands took over, these elephants thrived, while Platybelodon fell behind. Its extinction wasn't a sudden cataclysm, but a slow fade, a species squeezed out by gradual climate shifts and ecological competition. A master of its time, outlived by the changing world, legacy in science and culture. Though extinct for millions of years, Platybelodon lives on, in museum halls, scientific journals, and the imaginations of those who love prehistoric life. In paleontology, it remains a textbook case of scientific revision. What was once thought to be a swamp dredging plant eater is now recognized as a woodland slicer and bark stripping browser. Its story reminds us that science evolves. As new evidence emerges, so must our understanding. In museums from New York to Gansu, Platybelodon skeletons stand as striking symbols of evolution's creativity. In educational videos and children's books, its image captivates young minds, an elephant with a built-in garden tool. And in art, from digital reconstructions to old-school paintings, it has become a favorite among paleo artists. The moment it clamps its trunk around a branch, scraping it across tusks like a prehistoric paper cutter, captures imagination like few other creatures. Reflections from the deep past. What can Platybelodon teach us? It teaches us that life finds incredible solutions to the challenges of survival. 
It reminds us that change is constant, and that even the most successful adaptations can be left behind when the world transforms. But perhaps most importantly, Platabelodon invites us to wonder, to ask questions, to be curious about the forgotten giants of Earth's past. Because in that curiosity, in the moment someone sees a fossil and whispers, what is that? Platabelodon lives again.